It is not far from the shores of silence to the boundaries of speech. The path is not long, but the way is deep. You must not only walk there, you must be prepared to leap. Throughout human history, when human beings have chosen to go on a journey of depth, they did practices or exercises. And in the past, we have talked about those as spiritual practices or spiritual exercises. Today, if you ask almost anyone, what's that word mean? Uh, they don't know. And therefore, we don't use that word. We're going to talk about relational practices or relational exercises. What's that mean? That means I use my absolute freedom to choose a relationship. And as I practice or exercise choosing relationships, I practice and I exercise my interior life. When we do that, things change. So I'm going to give you a relational practice today to consider. You may even choose to practice it. As we go in a moment off to our groups, every time you catch yourself getting ready to say, I think, or I believe, or I hope, or I wish, or whatever, um, choke for a moment and begin your statement with, I experience, or I practice. I experience, or I practice. And what this little relational exercise will do is give us an opportunity to connect with our real, actual life and get us, guess what, out of our heads and into our lives. That's what we wish to accomplish with this curriculum. <clears throat> Prayer focuses our energy, our mind, our total being in one direction and for one reason. It is the act before the action that gives that action its power and passion. It is the act before the action that creates our interior resolve and fortitude. Be careful what you pray for. Prayer is power unchained. The unknown and the unknowable is your constant companion. It is preparing as best you can to leap into the unknown of action. You know that once the action starts, the plan goes out the window, but plan you must. I call that prayer, the action before the action. Prayer is tactics. A revolutionary always dies in her tactics, never in her goals. She never dies in inclusive plans, but dies in her tactics. That is why when a prayer is verbalized, when it is a prayer, it is always a prayer relative to tactics. Now what we're discovering, or I think, in our time is that will is an aspect of consciousness. Consciousness is not only taking in reality, but it's 
putting forth. And will is that dynamic of consciousness that is enacting something in the world. So it's consciousness that's doing your doing. Let's say a little bit more about consciousness itself. It is a attentionality. and an intentionality. Attentionality means paying attention, uh, taking in. Your consciousness takes in things. Uh, it pays attention to things. In that sense, knows things. So, attentionality has to do with the knowing aspect of being conscious. Intentionality has to do with the doing aspect of being conscious. And you use the mind to do your doings, but it's consciousness that's doing. When you say, raise my arm, consciousness did that. The muscles helped, but the muscles just did what they were told. It's not that there's some physical form that's raising my arm, really, although physical forms are used, of course, and the mind is used. But raise my arm is a command conscience is giving to my arm going up. And everything you do is originating in this mysterious consciousness, using your mind, using the muscles to do it. Your being includes attentionality to the world around you and intentionality to doing something in the world about you. So being is just the depth beneath this polarity of knowing and doing. Uh, but it's very different to operate out of your being and your doing than just simply uh, operating out of your last best idea. You see, if you're going from ideas to doing, you're living shallowly compared to going from being to doing. This persistent intentions is accessing your profound freedom, in the best case scenario, it may not work, but sometimes the magic works, that uh, a prayer life brings you in touch with your freedom and with the ability to be interiorly initiative uh, in the midst of things that are going to happen to you. So people who practice uh, ongoing, powerful prayer life, or what well, you might say, programming their interior computer <laughs> to be ready for opportunities to be that freedom that you're practicing. Then persistent intentions uh, helps you access your freedom, your basic freedom. And it's very helpful to understand what prayer is as persistent intentions. Historical engagement, this may not seem like a religious practice, but the illustration that convinced me it is, is walking the streets of Jackson, Mississippi with Martin Luther King. I had the opportunity back in those days to be an active part of the civil rights movement. And one of those active parts was walking down those Jackson streets, which were, you know, policed by racial bigots <laughs> of the highest order. <laughs> and those, so you looked at, at the danger of it, and you passed those people on the streets, some sitting on their porches, hating you and others cheering you on uh, as you walk down their street. That, to me, was a religious practice. Uh, it was accident prone, <laughs> making me accident prone to be a, a, a different human being. Working beyond fate with the possibility of revolutionizing my society, those kind of practices are options that the human community has invented to help us on our journey.